Remember this? It went pretty viral. And this man that Trump shoved, he is the prime minister of Montenegro, a tiny Balkan nation that never really got much notice. Or it didn't, until this. Inside Montenegro, the shove, as it's now referred to, drove opponents of the government wild. That was nice to see how they respect or don't respect our leader of Montenegro. The thing is, this was supposed to be Montenegro's big moment, just days away from joining the NATO military alliance. Those are the countries in black. But instead of basking in NATO glory, little Montenegro is caught up in a geopolitical tug of war between Russia and the West. This great power battle involves an alleged coup plot, several million bottles of Montenegrin wine, and hundreds of thousands of sunburnt Russian tourists. Welcome. We'll get there soon. Hey, it's Katie. And Sky, And we are going on a road trip through Montenegro. First, the coup, or the alleged coup. What we have as allegations <clears throat> are the two high-ranking security officials of Russia organized a group of Serbian radicals together with some Montenegrin political figures to destabilize Montenegro and to overthrow the government and, uh, if necessary, to kill the ex-prime minister. And that was to prevent the country from joining NATO? Correct. Prosecutors say the coup might have succeeded, except that one of the coup plotters chickened out and confessed to police. The capital city was put on lockdown and 14 people were charged. Moscow says all this is bogus, fake news, absurd. In June, on Facebook, the Russian government accused Montenegro of fueling anti-Russia hysteria and warned that it could take retaliatory measures against the country. Now, all of this went down in the capital, Podgorica. It's a pretty stark place, full of communist-era architecture. The city was bombed in 1999 during the Kosovo War by NATO itself. Yep, not long ago, Montenegro and NATO were at war, and that's pretty fresh in some people's minds. In downtown Podgorica, we went to meet the man accused of colluding with Russia to bring down the government. And it's true that not all Montenegrins were dying to join NATO. Far from it. According to opinion polls, people in the country were basically split about whether it was a good idea. That led to some huge anti-NATO protests over the past few years. Now, let's hit the road. If you start in Croatia and head south, then east, along the Adriatic Sea, you'll see the best of Montenegro, the things tourists come for. The country is in the heart of the Balkans. Until recently, it was joined in a single nation with Serbia. And it wasn't until 2006 that Montenegro became its own independent country. A single political party, and more or less the same men, have run the place for more than 25 years. This man is no fan of the Montenegrin government, or really, of the Russian government. And he's not hot on NATO. When uh, President of United States Donald Trump pushed very hard our Prime Minister in a NATO headquarters on the last NATO summit in Brussels. It showed us a real nature of NATO, uh, how they respect or don't respect our leader of Montenegro. We started big protests here in Montenegro. Montenegrin officials have accused opposition groups, including this one, of accepting millions of dollars of covert Russian funding. I know that you burned NATO flags at some of those protests. A few times. We have to be neutral, but great relations with both geopolitical centers. Outside Montenegro, the country is known best for its coast, 
There's 180 miles of it, and you can see it best by sea. Empires have fought for control of this coastline for centuries. In 2013, Russia reportedly tried to buy access to the port of Bar to use for refueling Russian warships en route to Syria. It's currently being used by the Montenegrin Navy. The coastline is key. See, Montenegro has just 2,000 soldiers in the whole country. But Montenegro's membership in NATO helps give the alliance complete control of the Mediterranean coastline from Portugal to Syria. We'll drive an hour north now, and you can see how stunning it is. But remember when Russia was threatening retaliatory measures over the whole NATO thing? Well, it might be partly playing out at a winery. Back in April, Russia put a ban on wine from Montenegro. Officials said the country's wine was dangerous, that some of it was contaminated with pesticides and plastics. We saw this series of wines in the analysis in Spain, in the Crown Gold, in Serbia, and even in certain Russian laboratories. On all laboratory tests in these countries, there is no and there is no one, but one of the most amount of the allowed amount of these unauthorized materials in our wines. Pazite, ne možemo mi da kažemo da je u pitanju politika. Mi smo tu da proizvodimo vinu i prodajemo vinu. But right now, Montenegro is mostly focused on tourism and making sure that none of this NATO stuff messes with the country's growing industry. Because Russians, often really, really wealthy Russians, make up about a quarter of the tourists to the country. But in April, the Russian Foreign Ministry published a statement warning Russian citizens about unfriendly attitudes towards Russians in Montenegro. They started first with a campaign a few months before the NATO. They made a report that the NATO is on the top, that it is dangerous, that it is dangerous, that there is a lot of smoke, that they are trying to get tourists who have to come to the NATO, and you know where they are? In Sochi and on Krim. Srećom, Putin ne daje pare za odmor, nego oni troše svoj novac. Tako da ja vjerujem da neće biti toliko štete koliko su oni željeli da naprave štete. Radulović je veliko figura u Montenegro. Flush, glamorous, a famous businessman and dealmaker. And that's given him a global platform to promote Montenegro to the world. Imao sam prilike da se upoznajam sa bivšim predsjednikom USA-a, gospodinom Clintonom, i tom prilikom sam mu poklonio kratku istoriju Crne Gore na engleskom jeziku. I zamolio sam ga, ako bude imao vremena, da pročita tu knjigu i da vidi da mali narod može da ima veliku istoriju. 